Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us. A uh, lot to talk about today, so let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and your uh, promises to Israel, that you are restoring Israel in these days, and we just rejoice with that. We pray for peace of Jerusalem and for rain. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We honor you, Father God, Jehovah, and we honor the Messiah, your Son, Yeshua ben Jehovah, and we pray in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you can see there on the screen behind me, you may not be able to read it, but it's a banner advertising a speaking engagement that I've been invited to with much honor. I'm really humbled that I get to speak in uh, Kenya uh, in the first week of December. Uh, Doreen and I will be traveling there and ask for your prayers and intercession to cover our travels and the ministry there. I've been asked to speak seven times in a youth conference to 2,000 young people, high school, college age, and young professionals from uh, six or seven different African nations uh, in one big conference in Kenya. So a great opportunity. And I've been asked specifically to, to speak on the subject of Israel because the leader, Pastor Misambu, says that his young people need to hear about Israel. They need to get the vision of Israel and how God blesses those who bless Israel. And he wants them to have that in, uh, in their quiver, so to speak. Well, uh, I appreciate if you would be praying for us when we go there. Well, um, I want to start with uh, my blog here that um, last week I spoke, I wrote a blog called, uh, first of all, let me say you can find my blog at ElishaVision.com. Uh, it's a new address. You can leave out the word WordPress now and just go to ElishaVision.com and you'll find my blog. And on my blog there's also a link to my YouTube so where you can get my YouTube uh, pro prophecy update that I do every Sunday afternoon, which is what I'm doing right now, of course. But uh, anyway, the uh, first blog this week I did was called European Union Kills Free Speech. And it's about a, a story where a woman was charged and uh, fined 480 euros uh, because she said something bad about the mu Muslim prophet Muhammad. Uh, and she said that uh, the... Uh, historical record of him uh, marrying a six-year-old girl and consummating that uh, marriage at the age of nine uh, is what today would be called a, a pedophile. Well, anyway, she was arrested and fined for uh, dishonoring Islam and the prophet of Islam, which is uh, common under Sharia law, but the European Union isn't supposed to be under Sharia law. And uh, so, but they actually, uh, the court uh, actually uh, concluded that uh, speaking against Muhammad the way she did uh, does not fall within the freedom of speech. And uh, so this article uh, talks about that. And uh, in fact, I quoted from uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. And uh, there's an interesting uh, uh, post on Jerusalem Post. No, excuse me, I'm skipping. There we go. Uh, this is in Prophecy News Watch. The majority of Americans say they are fed up with political correctness. And I thought this sign was just pretty <laughs> amazing. This was in a, uh, a rally in the United States. We condemn freedom of speech that hurts other people's feelings. My, my, if we ever go there, our nation is in trouble. Well, another uh, blog that I did this, did this week was uh, about the uh, terrible shooting in Pittsburgh, and uh, But there was a, a good news story, believe it or not, connected to that, and that is that the anti-Semitic killer was treated by Jewish staff. The head of the hospital where they took him was Jewish, and the nurse that waited on me first came in was a Jewish nurse. And uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the doctor said the irony of all this is that the pe first people that took care of him were all Jewish. 
And uh, so I think that's pretty cool, showing how the Lord's mercy extends. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So God is able to take something that Satan means for evil, and He's able to turn it to good. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. And here's a follow-up in the Jerusalem Post. Uh, the Jewish nurse who treated the synagogue shooter said, I chose to show him empathy. This was the same Robert Bowers that just committed mass homicide. The Robert Bowers who instilled panic in my, in my heart, worrying that my parents were two of his 11 victims less than an hour before. Uh, it didn't turn out that they were, but, but that was what was on his mind when he uh, started treating this killer. And yet he just said, uh, I decided to show him empathy. Uh, it's amazing how God can work in the hearts of those whose hearts are toward him. If you have a love of the truth, God will show you the truth. If you don't love the truth, God will actually send a delusion that you believe the lie. And make no mistake about it, the people that are uh, believing the lies actually really do believe them. They believe these lies. That's their sincere belief. Well, here's another little bit of good news. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, after the uh, shooting and, and at the time of the memorial services afterwards, uh, actually put Hebrew on the front page, right under the banner of the name of the paper. And uh, the Hebrew writing says, Magnified and sanctified be your name, which is actually the first few words of the Kedush that is prayed by Jews at funerals and memorial services. Uh, but again, uh, this is God getting good out of the evil tragedy and the, the terrorist uh, anti-Semitic attack. So praise God that he's able to turn uh, things to good that were evil. Well, here's a, another update on uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the, uh, the uh, president of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, again, this, this week, uh, he says, paying terrorists is our red line. Uh, he curses Trump, vows to continue to pay terrorists on any, under any circumstances. And if you've been with us a while, you know that uh, for years, the Palestinian Authority is paying millions of dollars. It's about one-third of their entire budget goes to pay salaries to terrorists and their families uh, who have murdered Israelis or bombed Israelis and so forth, and they're in Israeli prisons or they're martyrs. And uh, Abbas, uh, Trump says he's not going to deal with Abbas as long as he pays terrorists and terrorists. So that's my red line. We're going to keep doing it. And he cursed Trump. So uh, I think that we know where that's going to end up. And then uh, from uh, Prophecy News Watch, here's a story that uh, teaching the next generation to hate. Palestinian Authority schools teach the demise of Israel. This is actually a picture from a Palestinian youth camp this past summer where they're training Palestinian children. This is a little play they're doing. One child is acting like an Israeli, and the other two are the Palestinians, and they're about to shoot the Israeli. That's a wonderful elementary school or preschool program in the Palestinian Authority in Gaza. And, uh, and again, this week, the top uh, ruling council, the Palestinian parliament, uh, actually calls for revoking the recognition of Israel and nixing all the agreements. Uh, the decision by the Palestinian Central Council is not binding, but Abbas has vowed not to sidestep it, as he has done in the past. And so, uh, Palestinians already is more than shooting themselves in the foot. They're committing suicide because Trump will not deal with them. Uh, and, of course, you know that there is a, a burgeoning peace process now using uh, not the Palestinian Authority and Abbas, but actually going through Jordan and Egypt and, and some of the other Arab countries to try to find some sort of agreement. And, of course, by the way, that's to be announced soon, they say, maybe after the, uh, the uh, midterm elections here in America. But uh, we need to pray that, that President Trump will stand strong and not give away land or call, pressure Israel to give away land in order for peace. Because every time they've given land for peace, they get war. Every time Israel goes to war, they end up with peace. So you do the math. We need to pray that uh, our country will stand with Israel and with God's purpose for the land. Well, here's Israel Today magazine. The Palestinians say Israel killed boys who were catching birds. 
And so they want to so so they got, they want to bomb Tel Aviv. It's a story. I won't read the whole story, but but basically, uh, the uh, Palestinians are claiming that three young men who were killed on the border of Gaza and Israel uh, were only trying to trap birds for their starving families. That's the, that's their story. The story from Israel is just the opposite. The three young were young men, not little boys, and they were actually planting bombs to try to kill Israeli soldiers, and that's why they were shot. But uh, this is what propaganda is all about, folks. You really need to know uh, the news sources to trust. By the way, let me just stick in a little editorial comment here. I'm getting so tired of all the, the uh, American media that keeps repeating uh, a lie that says that President Trump says that the American media is the enemy of the people. He has never said that. What he says is the fake media, that there is media in America that gives fake news, and that is the enemy of the people. He's absolutely right about that. And he also, nearly every time he says anything about fake media, points out that there are also good media, but it's the fake media that's the enemy of the people. And uh, even uh, former uh, presidential candidate Romney this week actually repeated uh, that he's opposed to Trump saying that the media is the enemy of the people or the press is the enemy of the people. I'm sorry, that's not what the president is saying. He's saying the fake media is the enemy of the people, and it certainly is. Anytime the media lies, that is not to the good of the people of America. They need to speak the truth. And, and by the way, 92% of all reports in the media about President Trump are negative, in spite of the great successes that we're seeing in the economy and in many areas of our society, the Supreme Court justices and so forth. But the coverage is 92% negative. So there's an awful lot of fake media that is the enemy of the people there. Well, I'll get off my soapbox and move on here. Um, here's Louis Farrakhan in Iran this week. Uh, notorious anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan leads, leads death to America chant on his trip to Iran. While he's in Iran, this American anti-Semite is actually leading a chant of death to America. Well, enough said. And they accused Trump of being uh, treasonous uh, in a press conference with Putin where he didn't stand up to Putin the way they wanted to, and that was treasonous to them. I haven't heard anybody say this is treasonous, but it sounds like treason to me, sedition against his own country. Well, sorry I have such bad news today. Here's some good news. <laughs> with the election of the new uh, president of Brazil... Uh, he has confirmed that he's going to move the embassy to Jerusalem, the Brazilian embassy. He's going to fu uh, uh, fulfill his campaign promise. It says, Israel is a sovereign state that decides for itself where its capital lies, and we shall duly respect that. Well, praise God. I pray that he'll be blessed and that he'll not be a dictator, but he'll be a, a leader that God will use for Brazil to be blessed and prosper. Well, here's another headline. Um, just this week, uh, 40,000 Jews gather in Hebron to celebrate the rebirth of the city. And the quote here from Genesis 23, So Ephraim's land in Machpelah near Mamre, the field with his cave and all the trees, anywhere within the confines of that field, passed to Abraham. Abraham bought that land, and it became the burial place for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their wives in, in Hebron or Hebron. And uh, today they're celebrating that with 40,000 Jews uh, celebrating Hebron. And, of course, the, the patriarchs, the forefathers. God bless them and protect the Jews in Hebron. That's in the area called the West Bank, but it's actually part of Judah, in biblical Judah. Another article from Israel Today, analysis, Israel at the center of a new order in the Middle East. This is referring to the fact that uh, there is much happening uh, I mentioned uh, President Trump talking with Jordan and Egypt, but in the meantime, Prime Minister Netanyahu has traveled uh, to Oman and Abu Dhabi. Uh, or, excuse me, he was in Oman, and the culture minister, Mary Regev, was in Abu Dhabi. And uh, so there's been some outreaches to the Gulf states, the Arab Gulf states, and real cooperation. In fact, uh, the... Uh, the uh, Omir, I think he's called, of Abu Dhabi... Or, or, what is he called? <laughs> Anyway, the leader of, of, um, of Oman uh, actually says it's time that Israel be recognized as a nation. 
So far, only Egypt and Jordan have done that. So that could be a real breakthrough. We need to pray. Um, here's a story that I don't have time to get into in much detail, but there's a Christian woman in Pakistan who was arrested and has been in jail for seven years for blaspheming Islam. That was the charge. But she was recently uh, acquitted in a trial, but then massive riots ensued following that. And there's a picture of her. Her name is Aisha Bibi, and she's a, a Palestinian Christian, or excuse me, a Pakistani Christian. And her blasphemy was that she drank water from the same well in the same cup as Muslims did. Believe I'm not making this up. That's why she's been in jail for seven years. So she was acquitted. She was released. No charge whatsoever. Uh, and then guess what comes next? Riots. And then uh, the, the uh, law, the legal authorities are actually revisiting the, the acquittal. And meanwhile, the Pakistani lawyer for her uh, who won the trial and the acquittal is now has fled to Europe fleeing for his life because of all the, mo the mobs demanding that she be uh, executed. And then to top it all off, in the New York Times there's an article that says they refused to repeat what she said, her actual words for which she was accused of blasphemy, uh, said we're not going to repeat it because repeating blasphemy is also blasphemy. But hello, New York Times, we're not in Sharia law yet. Uh, it's not against the law even to speak blasphemy against Muhammad or Jesus or anybody else. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, this is scary. We need to really pray for freedom of speech uh, as to be held on to in America. Uh, here's another story. I don't have time to go into it or show the video, but just this Friday, November 2nd, an imam in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, says that all of Israel belongs to the Muslims and it must all become a Palestinian state. This is an, an Islam, uh, I mean an imam in America. My, my. And then, of course, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there were, there was an attack on three buses carrying Egyptian Christians to a, uh, a site in Egypt, and they were massacred uh, by Islamists. There's pictures of their cas caskets. And uh, they were Coptic Christians in the Egyptian city of Minya. And I believe it was 19 were killed. Yeah, there it is. No, killing seven and wounding 19. And uh, including a boy and a girl age 15 and 12 against that were uh, among the dead. And uh, I'm telling you, sometimes people get a little concerned about different denominations within Christianity. But I'm telling you, if you're in Egypt and you say you believe in Jesus as the Messiah and Savior... Uh, your life is on the line. I don't think there's any lukewarm Christians in Egypt. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're lukewarm, you convert to Islam to save your life. If you really believe in Jesus, you're actually willing to die for it, and, and that happens all, far too often in Egypt. Well, here's President Trump's warning about uh, the new sanctions that go into effect this week in Iran. November 5th, sanctions are coming. Uh, I guess it's a playoff of a movie or something. I'm, I'm not aware of the movie. Uh, but uh, anyway, it got a lot of buzz on Twitter, and I just thought I'd share it. <laughs> and um, another thing that Trump's doing, announced this week, that he's going to target birthright citizenship with an executive order and, uh, and, re and start the ball roll, and it'll end up being a legal thing all the way to the Supreme Court. Really, it's Congress that should be doing this, but he's going to try to get it stirred up and get it started uh, so that, that, that people here illegally and have a baby uh, the baby doesn't become an American citizen just because it's born on American soil. Uh, if they're here illegally, uh, it, it should not have that. That's the point he's going to make. And then one more little item of good news. Uh, Jews, this is also Israel Today magazine, Jews everywhere are sharing their faith in Messiah. And it's a neat testimony of a young a Jewish woman in uh, South Africa <coughs> Excuse me, telling her testimony of of coming to the point where she believes that Jesus is her Messiah as a Jewish believer. Hallelujah. Well, let's close in prayer. Thank you for being with us. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that the gospel of the Messiah will go to all the world. And then Jesus will come back. The Messiah will come. Thank you, Father. Bless Israel and bless America, I pray, especially in the elections uh, Tuesday, Lord. Let your will be done, I pray. 
that the enemy be bound and the, the believers uh, stand up and be counted. Thank you, Father. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for rain. In the name of Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.